everyone. This is Margaret Manning with 60 and Me. This is the place where women over 60 come to be inspired. And today we're going to be inspired by Mark Smith. Mark is a train, ex-train man who loved trains so much that he started an amazing website called, C6, called Seat61.com. And I'd love to welcome you, Mark. Thank you. Mark, you know, a lot of women in our community, 60 and Me, love traveling in general. They just love to go places and we are more adventurous than probably the stereotypes of older women um, would allow. But um, I wondered if you could share, in, because of your great experience with train trips, um, give us like five train journeys that women, older women, women in their 60s, or, you know, but we're not weak and, and um, afraid of an adventure. So, um, you know, five good trips for women, older women. Oh, there are so many. Yeah. Let's, let's whittle this let's down. Do five. Okay. I'd, I'd say one of the best train journeys in the world, and certainly one of the best in North America, would be taking Amtrak coast to coast. And the route to use would be the Chicago, Denver, Salt Lake City, Sacramento, San Francisco route of the California Zephyr. Uh, it's absolutely unbelievable. The flatlands of Nebraska, crossing the Mississippi, and after breakfast next morning, you literally scale the Rockies until you can see Denver <laughs> rising from the Great Plains below. And then you're following those Colorado canyons uh, for mile after mile, often just yards from the white water. Wow. Um, and then until you descend into those strange rocky outcrops of Utah, the desert of Nevada hasn't stopped yet because the next day you head over the Sierra Nevada and um. gradually descend to the Bay Area. It has to be one of the great train journeys of the world. And you can travel coast to coast on Amtrak for as little as 237 US dollars if, if you book ahead and, and take a reclining seat. But if you fancy an all suite uh, bedroom with shower and toilet, meals included in the dining car, well, why not? That sounds amazing. How many miles would that be? And how long? Now, uh, it's a three-day, 3,000-mile journey if you go coast to coast. You have to change trains in Chicago. And I think it's about, uh, yeah, it's 2,400 miles for the Chicago to San Francisco bit. Okay. That's great for you Quite women in the U.S. or any, anyone traveling to the United States. That's perfect. What about, um, let's go to like Australia or New Zealand. What, what's down there that might be good? Well, there are some great train journeys in both Australia and New Zealand. And one of my favorites in New Zealand is the Northern Explorer. It isn't the one that the tourists tend to use, the Transalpine on the South Island. This is actually a far more important journey. It, it's, it's the train which links the economic and political capitals of New Zealand, from Auckland to Wellington. It's an all-day journey. It runs three days a week, and it'll take you through just about every type of scenery there is. Uh, volcanoes, rainforest, farmland, coastline. Wow. It's an absolutely uh, amazing tri trip. And as most of the flights go into Auckland, and most people want to go to the South Island, why not ditch that domestic flight? and take the Northern Explorer down to Wellington and then the ferry across the Cook Strait to the South Island. That's one of the most amazing ferry journeys in the world too, straight across the Cook Strait and up the Charlotte Sound. It's absolutely beautiful voyage. Wow, wow. Okay, I, I have not done that one and that sounds spectacular. Um, how about Canada? I hear there's some really big um, spaces in Canada that are covered by train as well. well. Well, you can travel coast to coast across Canada on via rails Canadian from Toronto to Vancouver. Okay. That's an epic four-day trip and that'll take you to the Rockies as well yeah, or if you just want to do the Rockies well there's a train called the Rocky Mountaineer which runs on various routes the best one is Banff to Vancouver over the original 1885 transcontinental Can Canadian railway the Canadian Pacific route it's sadly the only passenger train that now rides that original route but they've got some double-decker dome cars with a restaurant downstairs and some seating under the glass upstairs you get an absolutely spectacular view of the rockies and the food service and commentary are absolutely first class you don't get this kind of excitement from people taking a train uh, a plane from uh, new york to, or from you to I, I listen to people discuss planes and it's, it's all about whether this airline has 31 inches of legroom and 32 inches of legroom yeah. and if you have to have discussions <laughs> lots, i think you're on the wrong mode of transport i agree with you completely i'm a big train addict too so what about um well how about europe then what's a good one in europe for us well i've got two supreme favorites in europe one is in switzerland 
down there where you are. Yeah, it's the Benina I'm... Express, which you can actually use as part of a journey from Zurich to Italy. It actually runs from Kerr, just south of Zurich, and it's a little narrow gauge train that scales the Alps right over the top of the Benina Pass and descends to Tirano, just inside Italy, from where you can catch a regional yeah. train into Milan. Just do that route. I think you have to do it twice, actually, because in, in winter, it's like going through uh, Narnia. It's a winter wonderland. Yes. And in summer, of course, you've got all those wonderful Sound of Music-style meadows with the, yes. the cattle grazing. Absolutely <laughs> fantastic, really. Yeah. And the other one, close to where I live, in, here in the UK, it's the Caledonian Sleeper from London to Fort William. This is a little train of, of sleeping cars, a hotel on rails with a lounge car that serves rather good uh, haggis, tatties and neeps with an obscenely large number of whiskies <laughs> that you can try in the lounge car. Uh, and you wake up, having gone to bed as you speed north from London on a busy main line at 80 miles an hour, you wake up at 30 miles an hour on a single track in the middle of nowhere in the Scottish West Highlands with deer bounding away from the train, <laughs> clickety-clacking on jointed rail before you eventually arrive mid-morning in uh, Fort William, right at the foot of Ben Nevis. And if you're feeling really energetic, you can then nip up to the top of Ben Nevis, about three hours up Britain's tallest mountain. Deep breath. Oh, my goodness, you've given us so many ideas. And those are five excellent choices. I think we've, we've got just about everyone covered, except maybe for Asia. We haven't done a, an Asia one, but maybe we'll do that on another, uh, another video. And um, I hope this has been inspirational. I mean, if you want that, the energy that Mark has just been demonstrating sort of online, just go to his website at 61.com and you will just, there's just so much information, Mark. I don't know, where, where, how did you get that name? I mean, I'm sure you get asked this all the time, but how did that happen? <laughs> Seat61.com. It's my favorite seat on Eurostar. And when I, when I left London on one of my long special trips, maybe via Vladivostok to Japan, maybe via Paris and Madrid to Morocco, I would always book seat 61 because it's the best seat in the house, lines up the window. It's just the best seat to choose. And you must have to work at that. I suppose people know you by now. They know who you are so that you get to, maybe maybe they save it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did step off. I did uh, board a Eurostar and ask them because I wasn't in seat sixty-one. I did ask the attendant whether seat sixty-one was free, and the train manager was just coming off the train, just stepping down the steps, and said, "Ah." Oh, are you the man in seat 61? I said, oh, yes. that is so That's cool. Fun. Mark, that has been wonderful. Thank you for those five brilliant ideas. And I hope that everyone who's listening is going to take uh, advantage of what Mark has uh, over the years learned about train travel. Thank you so much, Mark. 